after nearly a year of ownership of my 1978 Lincoln Continental Town Coupe, I've decided it's time to move on. Well, actually I've been trying to sell it off and on for about six months. And in that time I've only had one person come look at it in person and maybe a handful of people contact me about it. I finally got sick of dealing with it and took the only very low offer I ever received on it. Which means out of hundreds of car sales, this 1978 Lincoln Continental Town Coupe is the most money I have ever lost on a car. Of course, I'm not counting newer vehicles I've owned for years since depreciation over time is a given, but there are several newer cars that I've owned for about a year and taken less of a beating on. For example, in 2011, I bought a brand new 2012 Volkswagen GTI with zero options for $22,000 and sold it to CarMax about a year later for $18,000. $4,000 over a year with a brand new car isn't too bad. This Lincoln was way worse. First, let's look back on my year with this land yacht. In June of last year, I purchased this Malaysia era barge for $9,000 from an enthusiast in Las Vegas. I had some friends of mine go out there and look at it for me, and it actually broke down on their test drive. They claimed it had run out of gas, but it took some fiddling to get it going again. Otherwise, my friends gave a positive report. So I bought it and spent $500 shipping it back to Wichita, and within an hour of getting it, this happened. Gasoline overflowed out the carburetor due to a pinched tank vent creating back pressure, hitting the distributor and sparking a fire. This melted the carburetor as well as the entire ignition system. I had it towed to my mechanic, and the fire damage was just the tip of the iceberg. I guess my friends never looked underneath to check for any leaks, and honestly I never asked them, but this thing was leaking from everywhere. The engine was leaking oil badly from the crank pulley, as well as coolant from the thermostat housing. The hydraulic brake booster was dangerously leaking, as well as the transmission from the front seal. Basically, every fluid imaginable was leaking a puddle on my garage floor. The total to fix all this and the fire damage was $1,860. I eventually fixed these items as well and a few other leaks that popped up, spending another $1,500 on this car. Everything left such a bad taste on my mouth that I never wanted to drive it. So I listed it for sale on various automotive websites and almost immediately had a committed buyer. He announced to the Facebook group devoted to these that he was buying it, scaring away others that were interested. Then the next day, he completely and totally flaked out. So months passed and hundreds of dollars were spent advertising this thing all over the place. I got a few emails, but nobody serious. I finally lowered the price to $8,000, which drew some attention, but mostly tire kickers. Then I got the only offer I've ever received on this car, $5,950 from the guy that sold it to me. Yes, there were only two people in the whole world who wanted this Lincoln and were able to put up the cash. Me and him. We eventually settled on $6,400, and he's happy to take it back and give it to his dad for his 85th birthday. So I sold it for way less than what I paid for it, and when you total up all the repairs on top, I lost a total of $6,860. On a car, I never even got to enjoy that much. It stressed me out, left me stranded, and was really just disappointing from day one. I almost would have come out better pushing this thing off a cliff the moment it arrived and I wouldn't have had all of this frustration. For almost $7,000, I could have bought a wide selection of interesting old hoopties, or lease a new Lincoln for two years. I could have also done something smart like had some savings, or invested it in penny stocks, or bought this lightsaber prop autographed by Billy D. Williams. I'm taking this as a learning experience, but it's really something I already knew. If you're gonna buy a classic car, get the absolute nicest one available. And if you can't afford that, wait until you can. Because in this world, they are either perfect and bring big money, or they're dirt cheap. There's just no buyers in between. Except this one idiot in Wichita, Kansas, but he's pretty broke right now. This has happened to me before, and if you click the link below and read my article on autotrader.com oversteer, I've listed some of the other big hits I've taken over the years. 
You would think that by now that I've learned my lesson, but I already have something else on its way. It's probably the most malaysiest car ever made, and I'm buying it totally sight unseen, over a thousand miles away located in the middle of the Rust Belt. To quote a famous disco song of the era, Every time I think I've had enough and start heading for the door, there's a very strange vibration piercing me right through the core. It says, turn around you fool and, uh, uh, buy a land yacht. Did I mention that I'm an idiot? This YouTube bunny better start rolling in, otherwise I'm going to be living in one of these things before too long. Oh. <sighs>